Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar on importance of construction stage analysis for composite bridges using MIDAS Civil. My name is Nivedita Kumar. I'm a technical support engineer at MIDAS. I welcome you all for today's webinar. In case you have any questions, please write in the questions box so that I can answer to them uh, during or after the session. So without any further uh, ado, let us go ahead and uh, begin with the introduction to MIDAS as a company. So MIDAS was established in the year 1989. And since then, the software solutions have been distributed in more than 120 countries. The headquarters of MIDAS lies in South Korea, in Seoul. And all over the world, there are several branches. Talking about MIDAS's two main business areas, one is engineering consultancy and the other is software development. So based on the consultancy requirements of practicing engineers in the fields of bridges, buildings, geotechnical and mechanical, the softwares have been created, have been made to, may, uh, to be user friendly and provide optimized design results for a bridge engineer, building, geotechnical or mechanical engineer. Coming to the uh, major users of MIDAS. So you can see uh, most of them, they are using MIDAS Civil or MIDAS Gen or NGEN or Civil or geotechnical solutions that have been offered by MIDAS. So let me uh, take you through the list of users. The list of users in Nigeria, now let us understand what all types of software, uh, what all types of bridges MIDAS Civil can handle. Uh, if you would like uh, to perform the analysis and design of conventional bridges, uh, there is Culvert, frame bridges, slab bridges, uh, integral steel plate girder bridges, precast girder bridges, steel box girder bridge in our standard version of MIDAS Civil. Then uh, we have staged and uh, stage segmental bridges. Uh, th these include the balance cantilever, incremental launching method, moving scaffolding, precast, and full, full staging method. And in the uh, advanced version, we have our cable state bridge and suspension bridges. Those include the cable state bridges, uh, extra dosed bridges and suspension bridges. So 
that's about the application area of MIDAS Civil. Now let's uh, get to the main topic of discussion. In today's uh, webinar, we would understand why construction stage analysis is necessary for a composite uh, girder bridge. And uh, we will see why uh, with the help of a comparison between com conventional analysis and the construction stage analysis. After that, uh, uh, we will understand how construction stage analysis can be done in MIDAS Civil. We'll see its procedure and the time-dependent material properties definition, uh, the construction stage definition, and after that, how to read the results of construction stages in MIDAS Civil. Uh, we will have a live demonstration on the capabilities of MIDAS Civil in, in terms of construction sequence analysis. And uh, then we will go ahead with the question answer session. So let us start with the first uh, topic that is why construction stage analysis. Uh, first of all, let us understand what is construction stage analysis. So during construction, the bridges would undergo changes uh, in, in its entire structural system, in boundary conditions, in uh, material properties that would change over time. And there would be uh, several types of changes in the order and also time differences would be there on the loads that are acting. Uh, these changes would should be reviewed uh, because they generate different displacements and member forces at each sequence, uh, at each construction stage, and they may act more critical on the structure than the service stage. So because of these critical forces that can affect uh, in any temporary structure, in any temporary support conditions uh, along the construction process, then uh, it becomes important to take into account the time dependent effects and maybe most importantly, the safest and most economical construction process has to be considered. Now let's take a look at some of the differences between the conventional analysis and the construction stage analysis. In conventional analysis, uh, it is basically run under the assumption that all the loads are simultaneously added to a completed structure. Whereas we know that in reality, a construction process is sequential and loads are added to the structure as segments are being constructed. In case of RPSC girder, first our girder is placed, then the diaphragms are cast and after that the deck is cast. So it is with course of time and separately, not at once. So if we look at this information in a finite element analysis point of view, we can see that in the conventional analysis, all the elements of the structures are activated. And those are right from the beginning. And even the loads are activated right from the beginning. Whereas if we conduct a construction stage analysis, we can see that in stage one, we can activate the first part of the structure with its loading. In the second stage, the second span is added and third stage, the third span is added with its loads. And when we take a look at the results after the analysis of each type of analysis, like conventional and construction stage, it is clear that with the construction stage analysis, some critical effects may occur actually in the elements that have not been outlined in the conventional analysis. This is very important and has to be considered in the design. Now let's see how we tackle construction stage analysis in MIDAS Civil. There are two main parts to be considered. Firstly, time-dependent material properties 
these are accounted for defining creep shrinkage properties or compressive strength gain and also tendon relaxation and the second part is the definition of stages and the actual sequences by using members loads and boundary conditions now let's see how the procedure is actually done first we have to define the structural model then the time dependent material properties and assign them to the base material after that we we use the uh, analysis options of construction stages and also we define the construction stages the construction sequence activate and deactivate members and loads and boundary conditions uh, as per the site conditions and then we uh, define specific analysis conditions as well like if we want to consider or not consider the creep shrinkage properties and the reinforcements or not so on after that uh, after the analysis is completed after it is run then we can combine the construction stage results and the completed structure results uh, the completed structure results would include the results that would be post construction sequence like the wind loads the earthquake loads and also uh, temperature loads so the construction sequence loads can be combined with the completed structure loads and further we can go ahead with the design now let's take a bit of look in the time dependent properties as we all know many factors can affect creep and shrinkage these factors may be water cement ratio the age of strength of concrete ambient temperature or humidity exposure classes the aggregates moisture content and most of these are considered in midas civil and you can see on your screens now just how simple the definition is the definition can be done for both creep and shrinkage and the strength gain either by choosing one of the design codes available or manually defining the properties in Midas Civil, we have CBFIP and European Standard. And as per European Standard, it has been given how to calculate the creep coefficients in Annex B for creep as well as for shrinkage. If not these reasons, then you can always understand that you should go ahead with the recommendations given by the code that you're referring for design purpose. So you can see on your screens right now how BS 5400 code has recommended that the design of composite concrete structures and members should be in accordance with certain clause and uh, it should have uh, it should include the it, it should be include it should include the method of constructions <clears throat> where in the time dependent properties like uh, creep and shrinkage are considered so these are the several clauses where we can see how the stages have been mentioned in the code and it is uh, definitely a requirement uh, suggested by the code also for you to go ahead with a staged analysis now the PSC bridge that you are designing that is also going to have pre-stressing members as in the tendons and when it comes to pre-stress losses come into picture we can manually calculate the losses. Maybe it would be okay with the immediate one, but the time dependent losses are difficult to uh, accurately measure manually. So you can get the, um, the calculation of these losses done in Midas Civil. I would like to specifically talk about a phenomena in which the tensile stresses decreases over time 
and when the pre-stressing steel is maintained at a constant length under tension. And this phenomena increases as the temperature increases and the stress increases. And therefore, for pre-stressing steel subjected to very high levels of tensile stress, the pre-stress decreases more due to the relaxation. So basically, I'm talking about the phenomena of relaxation, which is with course of time. The basic concept of construction stage definition in MIDAS Civil is based on the group activation and deactivation. All structures, loads, or boundary groups can be activated or deactivated during the construction sequence. You can see from the top left corner the list of stages. This can be automatically generated or they can be added in manually in MIDAS Civil. In the stage definition, we can choose the name, the duration, whether to save the results for the stage or additional steps, and which elements, loads, or boundary conditions would be activated or deactivated in a given stage. In addition to this, as now, maybe there are 90% of bridges that are composite bridges. And we have added a function that allows us to define one finite element with two different properties, considering the pre-composite property of the section <clears throat> and the composite properties of the section. These are easy to follow and we can choose in which stage any of the properties are to be considered. So that is what composite section for construction stage provides in MIDAS Civil. So the girder is generally part one, which can be activated at one stage, and the deck is part two, which can be activated in the other stage. But this entirely is one single section property assigned to one single element. In the construction stage analysis control data, we can choose options regarding our analysis. If we want to take into account the non-linearity, P-delta effect, if you want or not to consider the time-dependent effect, and many other options regarding the initial forces and such things as tendons. Now let's take a look into the construction stage results. Construction stage results are separated in, in order to be easier to read, and we can read results for the dead loads, the erection loads, and also results coming from the pre-stress, creep, shrinkage, both in their primary and secondary effects. And all of these can be read together with uh, their summation in order to have the results from the total effect on the elements. We can see here an example how the dead load plus pre-stress and creep and shrinkage effects are added together and we can read them as a total effect on the members by using the summation. So that's what we are able to see, separate results for dead loads, pre-stress, creep, shrinkage, and the addition of all of this in the summation. Also, results can be read for a specific uh, thing such as the tendon pre-stress losses in the table format. We can read losses as immediate losses due to creep, relaxation. Also, these losses can be shown in the graph format. Specific results can also be read for composite sections, and we can see for each of the parts, the results can be read differently, and each of the parts have specific points where stresses can be read or forces can be read. So that's part one, part two. That means in the girder or in the deck, we can get separate results like actual bending. 
and you can get stresses at different locations at different parts of uh, at different points of the cross section let us understand how bs 5400 has talked about the uh, the stress check during the construction sequence so i believe that we are trying to show here why we need construction stages if you do not do construction stage analysis how would you check these stress limits given by british standard at transfer so this is the clause these are the clause references to uh, consider the limitations for uh, for the compressive stress during the construction stage so we can get the calculations done and apply them over here in Midas Civil. Similarly, the tensile stress limits have been specified to be checked at transfer by BS 5400. We can see the clause references over here as well, and we can input these stress limits in Midas Civil to get them checked after the design is performed. This is how you can get an output for the stress check by, by performing the design and generating an Excel report. You get the combined stresses due to bending moment about major and minor axis. And also you get the results for at the top fiber, at the bottom fiber, so that these are covered by the program in the design. Then a liable stress of cross-section at construction stage is also given in the table, the one that we have specified. So that is basically un uh, taken, uh, considered by the program and uh, it gives directly a check saying if, if certain uh, limit has passed or not passed by giving OK and not good or NG uh, so, uh, respectively. Uh, BS 5400 code also recommends the longitudinal shear uh, that is between uh, the parts, different parts of the cross section. And Midas Civil has very well incorporated these clauses in the design performed and reports generated in the Excel file format. So now I'd like to go ahead and uh, take you through a live demonstration. So here we would understand the uh, how the construction stage analysis uh, can be done. I'll be uh, modeling two span bridge with uh, 22 meters of each span representing uh, five numbers of eye girders based at three meters. Uh, that will be for each span and our first construction stage uh, would represent the activation of substructure together with the self weight and the boundary conditions for the substructure in the second construction stage uh, the precast beams would be added and if there are any temporary support conditions or form works uh, to be considered so those can be done and uh, you can have them as simply supported in addition to the activation of our precast girders uh, we can get the wet concrete load and the pre-stress loads to be activated along with the uh, girders then the third construction stage uh, which would be our long-term stage uh, we will activate the slab part that is the second part of the composite section together with the transverse elements that would be representing the grillage and also uh, we would change the boundary conditions of the beams to now fully restrained and deactivate the wet concrete load and activate the superimposed dead loads like the wearing course and the barrier loads so this is uh, what we can see in a gist so let me take you now through Midas Civil software solution. 
So So this is what we are going to prepare. In many programs, you would be able to generate your entire uh, bridge uh, by using coordinates, by using importing features and so on. Uh, in Midas Civil, yes, you can do that. But on top of that, what Midas Civil provides is the information like over here, we can get the data about the precast uh, girder cross section. This is non composite, but we can define the composite cross section properties where the deck will be added along with the girder. So we can assign the cross section properties to our girders and those are line elements then diaphragms have been added at uh, the ends and at intermediate locations uh, we have substructure pier cap and pier so you can notice over here the pier is uh, not necessarily a rectangular one or a circular one of course those cross section properties are available but there is a solid track type of cross-section property which can be analyzed and designed in Midas Civil. Then further, uh, there are grillage uh, lines uh, in the transverse direction, grillage line elements in the transverse direction, uh, just to transfer the forces uh, between the longitudinal girders and these are the edge dummy beams. So that's, uh, that's about the cross-section properties. Uh, coming to the material properties, so we can define the concrete material property as per British standard and European standards. There are several codes and a database available for each code. Uh, you can also have user-defined material properties. So C40 is assigned for the girders, C25 is applied to the deck. Uh, further, we have uh, the substructure material property defined uh, then there are there is a tendon property also defined we have database for the tendon properties so there is a possibility of having the tendon definitions quickly done and you can manually also specify the uh, properties of the tendon uh, this is the diaphragm property and dummy material property is for our transverse uh, dummy deck elements which would basically have zero density but would have the stiffness to transfer the forces in the transverse direction so that's the material now when it comes to the time dependent material properties we can go to the creep shrinkage and add over here uh, there are european standards like cbfip and eurocode european code over here to order calculate the creep and shrinkage. Other than that, ACI, PCA methods are also available in Midas Civil. So we can basically choose the code and uh, we can specify the name and the, uh, the properties like the characteristic compressive strength at the age of 48 days. And the notional size, it, uh, it you can keep an arbitrary value of one because the program has uh, another command which can auto calculate the notional size based on the cross section properties we have provided already over here. So that's there, and here we go. We get the creep coefficient graph as well as the shrinkage strain graph. <clears throat> so after uh, we applied for C40, we can apply for C25 as well by simply doing this. So we get the creep shrinkage, then the compressive strength. So here again, we can specify the uh, compressive strength gain with respect to time as per CBFIP and European standards. So uh, basically, uh, it's, it's uh, going to get added with 
the FCK plus delta F value is to be applied here and we can redraw the graph. So that's for C40 and similarly I'll add for C25 here. Redraw the graph. And then we would go to the next step that was to link the material properties the base material properties with the time dependent material properties so these are the time dependent properties of creep shrinkage and compressive strength and these are the base properties so we simply add here and we do the same thing for c25 which is for the deck the substructure the diaphragm so we add all of them and next uh, the notional size so the notional size, as I mentioned earlier, can be auto-calculated using another command, which is change property. You simply uh, select all your, uh, sorry, all your members and just click apply. And uh, you can see here that the notional sizes have been automatically calculated by the program. So that's uh, how beneficial and how easy it is to assign the time dependent material properties to the bridge in Midas Civil. So after uh, the time dependent properties are done, we can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, look at the boundary conditions. So here I have assigned the fixed support condition uh, for the bottom of the pier and also below the bearings. We can simulate the bearings with the help of elastic links. So that is uh, a possibility. Then uh, further, we, if we look at the non-rendered view, we can see that the uh, line elements are actually at the top, which means that we are considering the practical modeling concept over here where the loads are applied on top of the girder and then transferred to the bottom of the girder. So this can be covered by providing a rigid link. Uh, another thing that I would like to talk here is uh, the construction stage analysis uh, that requires groups. So there are several groups that I have already defined over here, uh, but these groups are necessary so as to activate or deactivate them during the construction sequence that we define here. So I would be generating the links for my rigid uh, connection between the top of the girder to the bottom of the girder. Uh, let me activate the nodes over here. So we can have a rigid connection to transfer the forces completely and I'll copy this rigid link data in the y direction four times at three meters because the spacing of each of these girders is three meters. So I'll go ahead and select my master node and my slave node, which will be at the top of the bearing or the bottom of the girder, and I'll apply. So that's how easily we can assign the rigid links and the same thing, I'll do it on the support location. And also at the ends. So this is how we generate the links. So we have got our support conditions uh, and we can also introduce temporary support conditions uh, that could help us to have, uh, let's say a simply supported condition for our girders. So we can just activate the girders over here and we can assign the beam and releases into the temporary release group and uh, we can choose to release the moment about its local y direction so this is going to be the i end for these elements and these elements right over here you can apply that and the j elements the j ends of these elements For that, we will just check on this option and apply there. So in this way, we can get our uh, 
temporary information that can be deactivated in the third or the last stage where uh, we will finally have the uh, complete constraints applied. So that's about uh, how we can specify the uh, boundary conditions along with different groups. Now so we have included the substructure with uh, the peer caps, peers and peer caps. And uh, further there is a diaphragm, then there is a girder group, and the Goda group would include all the nodes also, which would get activated along with the um, along with the support conditions. And then there are dummy elements. Uh, further, you can also check what the boundary groups have been assigned to, so uh, so that whenever we activate them during the construction sequence, uh, we can see that information. So. To be uh, very clear about uh, how the uh, support conditions have been assigned, we can always double click and check the data. So that's how user friendly Midas Civil is. Now, coming to the loading part, in the loads, we can go ahead and assign the uh, sulfate under the sulfate group right over here. We add then we can apply the uh, wet concrete load on all of our girders. So this would include the wet concrete case and the group for wet concrete and a load over here. Then further we can assign the wearing course load on our members. Uh, we can assign it on the girders or we can assign it on the uh, dummy transverse dummy elements as well. So that's definitely uh, our choice. We can uh, do that part. So if it is only the transverse dummy elements, you can double click only those and assign the loads likewise. Then uh, further, we can go ahead and assign the barrier loads using the uh, barrier load option itself, I mean element load option itself. So you can now go ahead and uh, simply activate the girders and have a better view of how the eccentric load can be applied. So here if I want to assign the eccentric load, uh, I can do that very easily by specifying the distance. So I select my girders and I specify the value and just click apply. So I have my barrier load for each side. So I'm providing an eccentricity to correctly locate my barrier load on my structure. <clears throat> so after this is done, uh, we can go ahead to the next part of load application. Uh, so that is the pre-stress. So pre-stress is uh, done by simply selecting all the tendon profiles. I'll select firstly the uh, load case and the load group, and then all the load profiles. And uh, we can put those load profiles right over here, and we can assign a pre-stress value over here um, of uh, 0.7 times the ultimate strength of our pre-stressing steel. So Tenant properties have already been defined here. Uh, these are available for pre-tension, post-tension, and external type of tendons. And uh, you can provide the total tendon area, the duct diameter, and yes, we talked about the relaxation coefficient. Uh, well, you can choose the appropriate standard over here for uh, auto-calculating the relaxation coefficient. So European standard has got the uh, normal uh, the ordinary low and hot rule BS code also talks about the normal and low relaxation steels. So you can uh, definitely opt for the European or you can opt for the CBFIP where you can specify how much uh, percentage of relaxation is allowed over 1000 hours. So that's uh, that's about um, uh, the tendon property for the relaxation coefficient for auto calculating the losses. Similarly, loss due to friction would be auto-calculated. The uh, anchorage slip loss is auto-calculated. So this, this is uh, available 
in the program for definition. Uh, the tenant profiles can be generated in several methods. For example, uh, we have the tenant profile using coordinates option. So you simply uh, copy paste the coordinates uh, from Excel sheet over here and the profile would be generated automatically. That's one method. Another method is to use the tenant template. Uh, we have a tenant template for automatically generating the data for the tenant profile. So you can actually see over here the uh, tenant profile data and you can choose to uh, you know, keep those that you need or uh, those that you do not need, you can remove them. So like this, we can definitely uh, have the number of uh, methods. So these are auto generation, but if you want, you can also click on add and get the curve type of um, profiles generated quickly by specifying just few data and uh, applying it to the structure. So that's the tenant template. And uh, lastly, we can import uh, an AutoCAD DXF file uh, also to generate the tenant profile. So in this case, like for example, over here, uh, we can put up the elevation and we can put up the plan over here data and uh, likewise select all the information and put it under or under here to define the appropriate tenant profile so it's uh, going to generate an mct file which you can import directly in midas civil so that's uh, how we define the load information now after the loads have been applied uh, the next step is to define the construction stage so we define the construction stage. You can define it from here or there. Uh, so there would be like a construction stage, the first construction stage where just the substructure would be activated with certain age of maturity um, because based on this, the compressive strength will be calculated by the program. So you can uh, either give the age after 28 days or you can ask the program to start getting the calculation done with uh, the substructure at uh, three days, uh, substructure casting after three days. So that's completely your choice. So after the substructure, you can move ahead to the boundary conditions and put the fixed support condition for the substructure and the sulfate. Once the sulfate is added, we don't need to add it again and again. It will be activated throughout the construction procedure. So as and when the elements will get activated, the sulfate of those will also be considered. So this, uh, this could be your uh, duration zero. You can click apply and define the next construction stage. Uh, this construction stage, let it be of 10 days because we are going to now activate the wet concrete load. And uh, we will also activate the pre-stress uh, and uh, also the superstructure fixed links and temporary releases for our stage two. And uh, the element, of course, would be our girders and the diaphragms. So these would be activated. The diaphragms can be activated uh, at the age three, or you can just activate them. And further, the, the calculation of uh, the age of diaphragm would be based on the duration that we specify here. And in case uh, any of the loads are to be activated at certain uh, latter day, like let's say on the fifth day of this construction stage, then there are additional steps for that purpose. No need to create more number of construction stages. So that's our construction stage two. And then we have construction stage three in which we remove the wet concrete load and we add the remaining loads so this is where the wetting course and the barrier loads would start acting. Uh, this construction stage three is going to be our long term uh, stage where the effect of creep and shrinkage would be fully considered and uh, we would remove our temporary releases over here and get it fully restrained, get the spans fully restrained. So that's one thing. And uh, of course, we need the second part of our girders uh, to be activated. So we will activate the grillage part of the structure. Those will be the dummy beams. So that's about the construction sequence that we generated by activating and deactivating 
the, uh, the members, the boundaries, and the loads. So let's now check the construction stage. So this is our first construction stage where the substructure is activated. From the works tree, we can see what all options or what all loads and boundary conditions have also got activated. So we can see that there is support and self-weight. Then we go to the next stage, that is stage two. Uh, in this, you can see that the second part of the girder is still activated. So what we need to do is we basically need to go to the composite section for construction stages. And here we can add the information for stage two of PSCI girder, uh, sorry, of, P of girder span one and span two. So we will select the material for the second part of our girder. So that's going to get activated in the third stage and also we will give the age uh, of our uh, of the concrete. Uh, the notional sizes would get automatically calculated as you can see here. No need to calculate the notional sizes of composite girders too. So the same thing I'll do for the second span and activate in stage three with the age of 10 because our stage duration is of 10 days the second stage duration okay now let's take a look at the second stage so now in the second stage you can see that the second part is deactivated it's basically not activated. Only the first part is activated over here. And then we go to the stage three where the second part will also get activated. So if you want to have a better look, you can just uh, inactivate the dummy and you can see that the second part of the girder is also activated here. So this is how the construction sequence is uh, applied in Midas Civil if you are doing it manually. I would like to now uh, quickly show you uh, how you can uh, do this entire process in a very short period of time. I believe I've taken a little bit longer time over here for the uh, construction stage sequence definition. Uh, although there is a lot of uh, manual option available, uh, we have an easier method of going about the PSC uh, uh, construction stage analysis. So uh, here is where the greatest advantage of Midas Civil comes into picture, that is the wizard. Midas Civil has a priestess composite bridge wizard. So this wizard can help you to provide information about the type of your girders, how you want them to be modeled, then uh, what is the span, the deck information, uh, if it is curved, if it has queued support conditions, uh, then further, if you want it to be curved or not or straight, uh, you want the girders to be continuous or not uh, for each span, then uh, you can add the uh, substructures or you can do the analysis without the substructure like the peer peer caps. Bearings are also included here. Then uh, sections, so you can tell how many number of girders, where they are placed, what material properties are there and uh, also uh, how many number of parts are to be generated throughout the entire span. So that's done. Then the tendon template. So if you remember, we uh, defined tendons also, tendon profiles and tendon pre-stress. So now in addition to what we model, we get tendon profile, we get loads like the self-weight, the wet concrete, formwork loading, barrier loads, wearing surface loads, all of these loads are included and there is construction sequence too. So there is predefined construction sequence in the uh, uh, wizard that is available in Midas Civil. Would help to generate the data very quickly and the reinforcements can also be added to each uh, part of your girder and you can uh, choose if you want or not use it in the analysis uh, of your uh, PSC bridge. And another good part about uh, Midas Civil is that uh, you can save the wizard. Just a minute, let me 
Let's change the display settings here. Okay. Yes, so uh, basically we can save our uh, wizard right over here and um, we can open the wizard also. So you just open the wizard and you get all the information that you usually apply to your bridges. Uh, if there are some modifications uh, to be made, you can do that and generate your entire profile in a very short period of time. So you get your tenant information, the load data, the construction sequence, and simply click OK. And we have a bridge over here. Let me just change the color. So as you can see, the program has generated the entire model. Along with the model, there is construction sequence where you have your stage one with substructure, stage two with uh, girders and diaphragms. Stage 3 with wet concrete load. We can see that wet concrete load in stage 3-1 and in stage 3-2 the wet concrete load is removed and uh, there is the activation of the transverse dummy deck elements and stage 4 is where we get the barrier loads activated. So we have the barrier loads, the wearing surface loads, and then we can go to the stage five, which is for the long-term duration. So that's going to be done. I mean, as you could see, just one click and the entire bridge along with the loads and construction sequence and boundary conditions, everything was completed. So this is not just it. You can, of course, modify uh, the data that is given after the wizard because a wizard is a helping tool. So you can change any information from the construction sequence or you can also change your structure like for example if you want you can modify the height of the pier the cross-section properties and so on so another thing is Mida civil also has tapered sections so we have included that as well in the program the tapered sections to allow you to taper from the cross-section uh, T girder cross section at the support locations and the I girder uh, mid span cross section. So that's about the tapered cross section, which we can easily assign by simply selecting and using the drag and drop feature. So uh, that's how we can go about it just drag and drop, and the property is modified. So similarly, uh, we can do that for the rest. And another uh, good part is that even though you do, you have divided it into number of parts, you can uh, get them uh, covered by simply using the tapered group option. So the tapered group option is available right over here. So you simply select by double clicking and add so that the smooth transformation would be done by the program automatically. So the same thing, we'll do it for the next step. And that is it. So this is how we can easily modify our uh, bridge model uh, after the wizard has been completed. So um, after the construction stage analysis, now let us take a look at the results. So I'm going to open an, a model file which is already analyzed. As you can see, um, it's got even the moving load analysis as per the British standard, where the lanes have also been defined. And the straddling options are also available with HNHP loadings. Also, Eurocode is available if in case you're using that for the moving load analysis. 
So when it comes to the results, construction stage results, one advantage is that the software can automatically combine the construction stage results and the static results. So you can see over here, the moving load results are also combined with the construction stage results. Then uh, we can take the results like reactions uh, for every construction stage. You can check the values as well. <clears throat> right over here, let me just change the unit system to the Newton meter. Okay, then stage two over here. Then we can, like basically we can go on increasing, uh, changing the stages and we can see how the reactions increase uh, with addition of loads and uh, different types of members get activated and changes in boundary conditions. So that's uh, about how you can get the reactions in different stages. Similarly, deformations can be checked for every stage. Let's take a look at the deformed contour. Okay, then that's the first stage. Then the next stage, we'll just deactivate the values here. So that's the next stage. You can change the unit system at any point of time. Uh, then stage 3-1 and 3-2 and so on. So basically you can see the results for just the dead loads. So that's dead load only. Then you can check results for only tendons, uh, only for creep and for shrinkage and so on. So uh, you can see the shrinkage effect here and the summation of all. So that's the uh, displacement result which you can get for every stage. Uh, further, you can also see the results like the bending moment diagrams. Let me just activate only the girders for a better understanding. So that's the uh, last stage, stage five but you can check uh, how the results are shown for every stage over here. You can fix the active and just modify the construction stage. And whatever we are able to see right now is for the total, but you can check the bending moments for only the girder, or only the deck. So that, that is also possible. Now, uh, checking the results at different parts is uh, required mostly when we are looking at the stresses. So we can take a look at the beam stress diagrams for each part. Uh, Axial stress and bending stress combined can be uh, can be shown at the top of the girder, at the bottom of the girder, and we can see from the legend what the stress is, if it's compressive or tensile, and what the value is. So you can just simply change the unit system to Newton mm, and you can look at the results. So these are the results for each stage and for each part of your composite cross section. Uh, you can get these results in the form of tables also. Uh, for example, over here, you can get the uh, tendon losses in the table format. You can see the loss in different tendons for different uh, stages. And these include the immediate losses and the long-term losses, like the creep shrinkage and relaxation loss for every stage. You can also go ahead and generate the graphs for the losses. For every stage, you can check how much the loss is taking place for each tendon. So these 
are the output generated for the uh, tendons and um, also you can uh, take this entire information into project reports uh, furthermore let's uh, go to the design part in the PSC design there is British standard and there is European standard also available in Midas civil uh, when it comes to British standard we discussed about uh, how you can uh, apply the principal stress limitations at the serviceability and construction stage so if you look over here you can also put up the tensile limits so according to the code you can specify the serviceability uh, limit states and uh, tension is not allowed so zero and then compression is 16 uh, that is 0 0.4 times 40 um, megapascal and then tensile limit was uh, to be considered as one over here so you can uh, put up values <clears throat> tensile limit could be taken from here or you can put the tensile limit right over here as uh, 0 0.36 uh, into square root fck so that comes out to be uh, two point sorry uh, yeah 2.27 newton per mm square so you provide these values and you ask the program to check all the stress limitations and uh, ultimate limit state che strength checks to bending shear and torsion so after this is done uh, then we can move to the next part so let me just close this and get back to the post cs so this is where our parameters have already been set and then we provide the uh, PSC material data for the uh, girder as well as the deck and the reinforcement information uh, so reinforcements are also applied here we can see the reinforcement information let's see that so this is the reinforcement information you can apply this data and use it for the analysis uh, the code also recommends to check the longitudinal shear so based on the type of the surface you can uh, get the longitudinal shear check performed by the program and for the crack widths you can uh, choose what kind of uh, uh, site condition is there environment type is there around your bridge after the uh, information is provided for the serviceability conditions and uh, the strength conditions you can perform the design and after the design is performed you can get the results generated in the table format and also in the excel report so let's take a look at the excel report which is generated by the program also if uh, we would like to also understand what will happen if we have not uh, performed the construction stage analysis so i've uh, made a model file it's the same model file but i have reduced the uh, tendons in this particular model file uh, by reducing the tendons we can uh, see the effect of the uh, change in uh, uh, the effect of uh, not considering the construction sequence so if you do not consider the construction sequence then you would never know that your member is failing during construction sequence and construction stage analysis is not only to check the data during the construction sequence but also for long term effects uh, let's uh, for a future period so for a, if you have designed your bridge for a certain age up to like uh, some 30 years so in such a case you would also want to know uh, you also want to make sure if your bridge is going to be uh, standing at its position after uh, up to 30 years of its age so i mean 30 years is a very small year or that i have talking about uh, but it's just an example so in this case um, we can get the design performed right now the design is getting generated so before that let us understand the results for this particular uh, model file where the failure was taking place so when we go to the tables you can see the tables over here like stress for cross section at service loads and the program will check for compression and tension and from this table 
it is very clear that uh, we have got failure at uh, different positions so these are tens tensile failures that is occurring for different load combinations the program gives you a check ng and gives a color in the red so all these stresses are shown and compared with the allowable stress limits and all of this information can be generated in the excel file format too so this is the excel report generated by midas civil you get the input data <clears throat> so yes you get the information about the design code the input data material then the flexural design information flexural resistance check if it's okay not good then the mo negative moment check and shear reinforcements shear resistance longitudinal shear everywhere you would also notice that the clause references have been specified so you would be sure and also the formulas have been given torsional check and then comes the concrete stress check at transfer and during construction stage so this is where the program has found out that there is a flexural tensile stress failure in the program and you get this in a detailed format as well as you get it in the table format over here in the excel sheet itself this is the concrete stress for cross section at construction stage and the tendon tendon stress this is where you are getting the uh, the stress values after all losses so this is also one of the outputs necessary and you would get it after using the construction uh, stage analysis in Midas Civil. So that's uh, basically about the output generated by the program. Let's uh, go ahead and summarize. Until, okay, so over here, the data for PSC design is uh, coming out. So before that, uh, let me summarize our today's session. Uh, so basically, uh, Midas Civil is capable of um, using the time dependent material properties for creep and shrinkage. Uh, and those are automated in the program. So you do not have to manually calculate. Uh, then PSC sections and staged activation of parts can be done in Midas Civil. Uh, cross sections are available part one, part two for girder and deck can be provided. And uh, construction stages can be automatically generated with PSC wizard. So you, the basic type of construction sequence can be easily generated using wizard itself. So you save a lot of time. Uh, as per British standard, you can get the stress checks performed at transfer. Uh, Pre-stress losses can be calculated by the program automatically, immediate and long term because you activate your pre-stress in construction sequence which has certain duration and with the help of the uh, duration, the losses would be auto-calculated and accordingly applied in the design. And uh, after that, uh, we also know that Midas Civil is capable of giving a detailed design report in the Excel file format as per British standard recommendation. So that's about uh, how Midas Civil can incorporate construction stages, uh, which are very much necessary for a composite bridge. So I would like to uh, take up questions now. Please let me know if you have any questions. You can write in the questions box.
Okay, just to compare with the results of, uh, of the bridge that has no failure. So you can go to the uh, results table and you can see the stresses for cross-section at service loads. So all are completely okay. So this is how we can get satisfactory results. And this is available in Midas Civil when you go ahead with the construction stage analysis. Uh, please do share your questions in the questions box. If you have any questions related to the construction sequence or even the license, uh, license options that are given in Midas Civil, uh, if you're interested to know the price or any, any uh, data. afternoon everyone thank you so much for being with us so far in this webinar session we appreciate your time and for patiently being with us i hope the session was fruitful and informative uh, if there are any more questions we would be happy to answer them through email you can post all your questions in the questions box just to give a brief introduction about myself this is engineer pankaj from Midas IT. I look after for technical support and sales on behalf of Midas IT for Africa region. I would be quickly taking you through further with the pricing details of Midas Civil Software and with the year-end special promotion offer that we are currently launching through this webinar. This is a special benefit we are offering for the attendees of this webinar session. So I would request you all to be with us for next five minutes so to start with i would like to introduce you to the licensing type that we offer for midas civil software 
in Midas Civil, we offer perpetual lifetime licenses, which means you buy it for once and you have access to same version of the software for lifetime. Now, we have two versions in Midas Civil. The first one is standard version. Uh, I'm sure the first question that strikes your mind is what type of bridge the, the standard version handle? So to answer that, standard version can handle 2D and 3D box converts, RC girder bridges, RC solid slab bridges, RC integral bridges, voided deck bridges, steel truss bridges, steel arch bridges, simply supported box girder bridges, steel composite girder bridges, and pre-stress concrete composite girder bridges. So these are the type of bridges that are handled under the standard version of Midas Civil software. I'm sure most common type of applications across Africa are covered under the standard version. So my discussion would be in line to the information for standard version itself. So the standard list price of perpetual lifetime license of standard version of Midas Civil software is 9,000 US dollars. I would be sharing further details on the promotion in my upcoming slides. Before that, I would like to introduce you to the optional annual maintenance service fees on Midas Civil software. Because we provide licenses on perpetual basis, but of course there are several updates that we frequently come up with and we usually accept development requests or uh, we understand the requirements of the users which we try to incorporate in the software through the updates that we bring in for that there is an optional annual maintenance fees so the, as mentioned the service period remains to be one year as it's an annual fees uh, the service fees is 20 percent of the list price which comes around to be 1800 us dollars and the services and included under these this optional annual maintenance is we are offering free service module currently which helps in quick modeling of the composite bridges like we have seen in in the example in the demonstration today we have used wizard for pre-stress concrete bridge modeling so this composite bridge wizard access and the design access is included under the services. Then the frequent software updates that we come up with would be part of the services under annual maintenance, as well as the priority technical support and the customized trainings that would be required would be part of the annual maintenance. The cost for annual maintenance is 1,800 US dollars. In case you are in need of these services which are mentioned, which are specified herein, you can opt in for the annual maintenance. If you think you are, you are no more in need of these services, you can opt out of the annual maintenance and there won't be any uh, annual fees that you would, you would have to pay to Midas because you are paying for the perpetual lifetime license. I hope I'm clear on the optional annual maintenance so far and the capabilities of standard version along with this standard list standard list price further i would like to share about the year end special offer that we are currently floating for south africa and for africa region so First benefit under this ongoing offer we have is we are providing maximum of 40% discount on the software cost. As the standard list price for Midas Civil license is 9,000 US dollars, we are providing it at 40% discounted price, which comes down to 5,400 US dollars. So this is a significant discount of 3,600 US dollars that we are currently offering on the software purchase. Not just that, even on the annual maintenance fees, the maintenance fees is usually charged on the list price, which we are charging on the discounted price. So your future recurring fees, which you will have to pay is reduced down and the fees would be fixed to 1,880 US dollars, which is again 20% of the discounted price. So 
this would be the future maintenance fees which would be 1080 us dollars for your annual maintenance and we are providing free annual maintenance services for the first year so we are we are basically waiving off the annual maintenance fees for the first year which in a way provides additional discount of 20 percent in addition to the 40 percent discount that we have provided in first offer in addition to that we are offering free access to midas suit package for one year so when i say midas suit package it includes software other midas access to other midas software packages which would include softwares for geotechnical and mining package that would be midas gtsnx our building design package access would also be provided which will include Midas engine software and access to Midas CAD package, which is Midas CAD software would be provided for one year free of cost. This is with the intention such that if, if in case your company is into multidisciplinary uh, mode, or if you're looking to expand your wings in these segments of geotechnical buildings, then you would have free access to start with you would have free access to these softwares of Midas and you can utilize these softwares for completing live projects. We would be backing you off with the technical support and training services that would be required to your team in completing and utilizing these software licenses as well. So this is a, another value addition to value additional offer that we are including in this special promotion. In addition to that, we are offering uh, technical support and training services along with the software purchase so for that we are offering on-job trainings as you would be new to Midas you need not to be concerned and worried about utilization of the software we would be providing live project assistance on your first project so basically it's like working it's like Midas experts would be working along with your team on your first project right from the start from modeling, loading, results extractions, uh, generating outputs from the software till the time you complete your design for the first project. So it's it's with the intention of learning while doing, uh, which we are currently offering under the year-end promotion. In addition to that, we are offering customized online trainings for a team. We definitely have standard training material kits uh, but we, we we usually offer customized online trainings in which trainings would be tailored to the needs and to the projects that you have particularly for your company. So these trainings would be provided for entire team regardless of the number of licenses you consider to purchase. The third benefit that we are offering under technical support is we provide access to Midas customer online support portal. This portal basically gives you access to post all your tickets uh, and within 24 hours our our experienced technical support engineers would be pro getting back to you with the resolution so these are several special promotion offers we are currently extending for south africa and this is just a summary of the year and promotion that i just explained so to summarize by the civil standard version perpetual lifetime license which has standard list price of nine thousand us dollars would be provided at a discounted price of five thousand four hundred us dollars so this is with the maximum 40 percent discount on purchase which gives benefit of three thousand six hundred dollars second benefit that i mentioned was about the annual maintenance service which would be provided free of cost for one year which gives additional benefit of 1800 dollars for this year as well as for your future uh, annual maintenance fees that would be dropped down to 20 percent of the discounted price and the third major benefit that we discussed was about the midas suit package full version licenses that would be provided free for one year which would include softwares for mining geotechnical building package and CAD package and in addition to that we would be providing with value additional technical support services which will include on-job training customized trainings and access to our online portal 
So these are several benefits we are offering uh, on purchase of Midas Civil software. This year-end special promotion is valid if you confirm your purchases before 25th of November. The deadline for this promotion is 25th of November for confirmation of the purchase. The payments then can be made within November and by mid of December. So these are several terms and offers that we are currently extending as a year-end offer. And this offer is time limited. So in case you are interested and you're considering, feel free to send us your inquiries on our email address pankaj at midasit.com for all sales related queries you can send an inquiry to pankaj at midasit.com for your technical queries you can write to nevidita nevidita at midasit.com or you can always post all your queries and questions on our website midasbridge.com if there are any questions related to technicalities of the software or pricing of the software which you would want us to answer at this point in time we, we, we would be connected with you right now and we would be checking the questions box so please please feel free to post your questions there So we have some of the technical questions. We would be sending you some of the reference links over the email along with our responses. So once again, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your precious time. And we look forward to keep in touch with you further. Have a great day ahead. Take care, bye.